Hi and welcome to this new episode where I will share how I film birds on the OM-1. And today's setup is uh, of course the OM-1 and the Hemswego, our OM systems, uh, 150 to 400 mm f4.5. And I'm recording it all on the, the Atomos Ninja 5, so I can share with you what, um, what uh, I see in my EVF. So yeah, it's going to be exciting to see how it handles and I hope you, you enjoy this episode. Let's get started. The first bird I film are the little stint here. When I hit the record button on the camera, the AF box switch from white to green, indicating I'm recording, and the camera is tracking. You also see a red frame around the screen. The camera has no problem identifying the bird and track it. This is the recording from the camera internally, corrected in post in Final Cut Pro. I film in OM Log 400 and apply colors, contrast and stabilization in post. The same clip is now slowed down to 40% as I always film in 60 FPS on the OM-1, so I can use slow motion whenever I see fit. The bird is too busy feeding to notice I'm pretty close filming it. This doesn't happen too often, they are usually very shy. Here you see a problem the video AF on the OM-1 has. The focus are on the mod behind the bird, but the tracking is spot on when you see it on the LCD screen. This happens from time to time when using the bird AF. I hope it can be improved and firmware. My settings for video on the OM-1 for filming birds or short clips of birds. That's important to say because it has a lot to do with the, the settings. If it's short clips uh, in the same lightning situation or you have to film longer clips in, in different changing light uh, and backgrounds. My video codec is uh, H.265 and I shoot in 10-bit to have the best quality. Uh, I shoot in 4K 60. There is an option to shoot in C4K, that's a little larger. And then you have to rescale in, in post. I think it's easier just to shoot in 4K. I can't see the difference between, between the two. And the 60p is uh, the highest frame rate, so I can do a slow motion in post and mix it with real-time uh, video. So that's the two, uh, the two basic, basic settings. I shoot uh, mostly in manual. My white balance is auto, also my ISO is usually auto, and I control it with the shutter speed. I know it looks better to follow the 180 degree rule, have double the shutter speed of your frame rate to have it look more cinematic. For me, it's just easier to, to keep it auto and, and control it with the, with the shutter speed. Maybe it looks a little more, I don't know, digital or whatever. I think it's good enough. It looks good on YouTube and it looks good on, on phones and social media. So. I'm quite pleased with the, with the results, so I shoot it like that for the, because it is, it's easy. And also because I can fiddle with, the, with the ND filters, especially when I lay flat on my ground. In camo, I cannot uh, take out my hands and just switch filters and stuff like that, so that's how I do it. That's up to you. If you want the cinematic look, use the 180 degree rule. My autofocus settings for video. I shoot in the CAF with tracking on, and that's because if you don't have the tracking on, you can't activate the bird recognition AI in video. So that has to be on. If it's not, you don't have the option to, to put on the bird AF. AF speed or CAF speed is set to plus one, the fastest option. And that's because if I, for some reason, doesn't hit the bird, I want it to go back in focus as, as quickly as possible. And also if the bird is flying towards me, I want the focus to be able to keep up. So uh, the AF speed, uh, the highest possible on the camera. And then the sensitivity for video, I use it at uh, default zero, or maybe go to minus one to keep it uh, locked on on the bird. Uh, this is different in photo, I use different modes in photo. That was uh, the basic settings for yeah, filming birds. And now I will just uh, show you some, uh, some examples, uh, filming some waiting birds uh, walking around here in front of me. So let's get started with that. Here we have a curl of sandpiper searching for food. As you can see, I film with a high shutter speed, but I still think it looks good. I have the internal TC switched on, and my focal length are at 500mm or 1000mm in 35mm terms, as you know from full frame systems. I am using a tripod, and the camera shakes up because I mess around with the settings while I'm filming. Now we are seeing the footage from the camera's internal recording. And again, it has been corrected in Final Cut Pro. And right here, I'm slowing it down to 40% again to slow motion. This bird do not take notice of me like in the first clip, because it's busy eating and preparing to migrate south.
Here again you see the OM1 Spurt AF drift and go to the reflection in the water. And then find its way back to the main target. And from there it stays in focus. This lab wing has a lot of contrast and color. And the camera does a better job on staying locked on to this bird. It is also a little larger in the frame compared to the previous clips. This also makes it easier for the camera to hold the focus. It is absolutely possible to make beautiful bird videos with this system. I just wished it was more consistent on keeping the AF locked on using the bird recognition AI. I don't know if it's hardware limitations or it can be addressed in software. But I will be the first to praise a firmware update fixing this. In my opinion it's usable as it is now. It's not great but okay and usable for short clips like I make. That's all for this episode and hope you will give it a like and maybe a comment. Please subscribe to help my channel grow and to see future episodes. Stay safe, bye.